in 16 weeks, if you're curious. 16 weeks. Not too bad, huh? Not too shabby. Now, let's keep moving. This is how, I don't know what that is. Any ideas, Rob? On our slides? We've got some unusual, some, some spooky images. Is that a message? Is that a code? <laughs> I've got no idea what it is. Here's a legend. Have a look at this. On the left-hand side, you can see some pink area. It calls here left, uh, sorry, residential low density. The purple section is called local business and industry. The yellow parts, special uses, or government buildings, schools, dental practices, and stuff like that. Green, naturally, is recreation area. Here, in this section in the middle, it's cross-hatched for you. You can see there. That's a graduate called Richard, right in the guts. It says there, sorry, local business and industry. Here's the deal. The market's 2.2. Write this down. The market's 2.2. We've learnt that time is more important than what? Money. money. Richard dials up the owner and says, listen, I've learnt that time is worth more than money. I'm not here to insult your intelligence. I'm actually willing to offer you over and above the market in exchange for time. I need 24 months to add value to this thing. And I'm not willing to just give you 2.2 million as the market you would agree he said, I'll actually hand over 2.74 million under option. Was that a whole lot more than 2.2? Yes or no? Yes. The guy's getting 540 grand over and above the market for 24 months to sit around and do absolutely nothing. Watch some Foxtel, right? Are you with me so far? Yes. Now, the town plan, the council decided to change it. They said, you know what? That area in there is no longer local business and industry. They changed the zoning and they said it was going to be heavy manufacturing and industry. Does that massively change the value of the property? Yes or no? Yes. How much do you think it might be worth right now? How much? The market was 2.2. The option was at 10, uh, sorry, 2.74. How much do you think it might be worth right now? How much? 4 mil, 5 mil. Try 5.1 million bucks. It went from 2.74. We're not going to be the owner. And now the new value is 5.1. Is that a tidy profit, folks? Yes or no? Yes. There's two properties there. You can see the boundary down the centre. Two times 1,000 equals how much? How much? Two grand. Two grand from 2.74 to 5.1 million as a net profit. Does that get you out of debt? Yes or no? <laughs> yes. Does that get you out of debt? Yes or no? Yes. That gets things really rolling, doesn't it? And you know what? We weren't the owner. The zoning took place in nine months. We didn't even start a development approval in this case. But that gives you some idea of how the real estate magnates do it. And quite frankly, folks, you now want to be doing the same thing. Is that correct? Yes. Let's look at this next one. How do we find this? Well, RP data is where we find all the facts. It'll cost you some dough, but I'm happy to share that with you and show you how that works at a later date. Every property, as I said, every property transaction since 1930 across the country is stored on that database. In fact, 126 million files, if you wanted to know. There's 10.5 million properties in Australia, 126 million transactions are housed on that one database. The government sells it to companies like RP Data. Now, this is what it looks like. This is this property. You can see there, the sale price, when it was bought, how much for, has it got sewer, the lot numbers, the owner, I left a box off the bottom. Obviously, that was their phone number for privacy reasons. The graduate has dialed them up and said, Mr. Mr. Parker, I'm willing to offer you over and above the market for time. Pretty simple stuff. Would you like to see some deals? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yeah, some good examples. Here's a classic little deal in the Western Corridor of Brizzy, in fact. The owner happened to be a developer. He was in a financial bind. Things were not going good for him. He said, well, what's that worth to you? It's not terribly far away from a university. Who sees some key infrastructure here? Yes or no? Straight away. I'm thinking, what kind of accommodation? Student. Student accommodation. So we optioned it. The market was 800 grand. Am I going to offer him less or more? more. I said, 860. Are you happy with that, Craig? Yeah, sure. Absolutely wrapped. 24 months. Flicked it on. Five weeks later. Five weeks. I've got a 24-month option, but I sold the option in how long? Five, Five weeks. And when do we get paid? 24 months or when we actually give it over? Give it over. The minute you give it over, which is five weeks. 860 to 920, $60,000 in how long, folks? Five weeks. Can you start living better on 12 grand a week? Yes or no? Yes. 
Some of you sitting there going, oh, come on, you know, that would solve all my problems. Folks, it might take you a couple of months to get the hang of this, to bed it down and get the techniques, you know, refined. But this is what we're going to teach you. This is how we start. This is a live transaction, not terribly far from here. Look at this next one. Here's a store called Aldi. Do you reckon that might be some good infrastructure? Yeah, Aldi, absolutely. You can see this road here in the foreground, this dark bitumen piece in the centre. It carries 28,000 vehicles a day. 28,000 vehicle movements is a lot, wouldn't you agree? This chunk of grass in the background there is about to be a Harvey Norman superstore as well as a Bunnings. Who thinks that might be good infrastructure? <laughs> Key, right? Look across the road. There's a green roof and an orange roof. Green roof right next to Aldi and an orange roof, directly opposite of Bunnings, or what's going to be a Bunnings. So the graduate optioned the two of them. The market was 300, 310,000, optioned the pair of them for 673. Do we have happy sellers, yes or no? Yes. Straight up, they're getting more than the market without doing a thing. 673,000. Now, we went ahead and got a DA approval, development approval, for a small office building, as well as some medical centre downstairs. Did we add massive value to the property? I agree. This is what a valuer said ten and a half months later. It's worth 1.1 million or a cool profit of $427,000 in less than a year. Great wages. Now, great wages, someone said, yeah. That's what we're worth, isn't it? <laughs> Did I own the property? Did the graduate have any involvement? Have to settle? Yes or no? no? Don't need to do that. I don't have to be the owner to profit from this stuff. Roll it back out. And now it's starting construction at the end of January. Making sense? The ultimate buyer's like, absolutely stoked. I'm into it. I'm going to make some money out of this thing. They do what they do best. We just don't want to be the owner. Have a look at this one. Real simple transaction. There's a small gymnasium on the left-hand side. An old set of squash courts you can see there. It's been converted into a gym. In the centre there's an old house, full of white ants, in fact. Out the back, you can see some lights. That's for the tennis courts. See those lights? In between all that, there's about 4,800 square metres of property with an old house, tennis courts, car park, the likes. We optioned it up. Two properties, $2,000 on the line. We optioned it for 1,845,000. Now, let me tell you about the infrastructure. Across the street, there's a bylow. 200 metres away is a Woolworths. Good start, yes or no? Yeah. 35 specialty shop shops, two, serv sorry, two service stations, as well as a very large tavern. Is that a good start? <laughs> yes. People love taverns, right? So we've got a development approval for a very small convenience store. Blockbuster, Bra uh, uh, Brumby's Bakery, an auto barn. They're the tenants that are now moving into this place. And this is what the valuer said. The DA took 12 and a half months, or about 54 weeks, and this is what the valuer said it was worth. Is that a good deal, folks? Yes or no? Yes. That's 900 grand. The best part of 900 Gs in the space of a year, did we have to be the owner? Not at all. Didn't need a deposit. For you and I to settle on a property that was worth 1.8 million, we'd probably need about 500, 550,000 cash. Is that right? Yes. We would, wouldn't we? Yes. 550,000 cash. We just put down a $2,000 deposit. That was it. And offered the seller more for the property that was actually worth in exchange for what, folks? Time. Time. 895,000. Can you live with that? Yes or no? Yes. If that takes you the first year to put together, the first 18 months, is that still okay? Yes. I agree with you, 100%. Let's move on. Now, here's the five sectors. Write this down. You may not realise it, there's actually five different parts to real estate. The first one is residential. Residential blocks of land, residential townhouses, as well as residential apartments. I teach you the whole five sectors. Next is aged care. Do you reckon that might be a booming market in the future, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, it could be a couple of opportunities, what do you reckon? <laughs> yeah. I keep talking about an ageing community, right? Aged care. Next one, industrial. I've made a lot of money out of industrial. A lot of cash out of industrial. You can option something very cheap before too long. It might be worth four or five dollars more a square metre. But if you've now got 10,000 square metres, do you just make 40 grand, yes or no? It's a small ratio, it's a small profit, but when you multiply it over the area, you start making some very solid coin, some good returns. Next one is retail commercial. Terrific sector. In fact, in Australia, we're following the likes of the US. Commercial retail is a booming industry. Last happens to be professional office space. 
which is not doing that well today, is it? There's a lot of vacancies in this sector. But we all know that real estate is what? It is cyclical. It's going to come back, isn't it? We all know that. It's cyclical. Now, have a look at this. There's five sectors. Would you like to learn some more about options? Yes or no? Yes. All righty. Who's starting to, get, starting to gel and understand what's going on here now? It's control. I don't want the risk. You know what? If there was no risk in real estate, how many deals would you do? Come on, folks. How many deals would you do? If there was no risk, how many? Do as many as you possibly wanted to, couldn't you? It's the risk that turns us away from it. And now we've actually vacuumed out the risk, haven't we? We've taken care of that stuff. It's over there. It's someone else's risk. You have got nothing to lose here. It's like, you know what? If I don't want to do the deal, I tear up the option, walk away. Remember, an option is an option to buy or an option not to buy. Remember that stuff? A legal right, but not an? Obligation. But not an? Obligation. Obligation. I'm not obligated to settle on that thing. I'll settle on it if I get what I want from the council. If not, we tear it up and walk away. No harm done. Fair enough? Okay, here is now our combinations. Have a careful look at this. This is where Mervax, Delphins, Walker Corps, Westfield make some huge, huge gains. Have a look at this now. Here's an old laundromat on the left-hand side. A couple of old woody, wooden houses. A vacant block of land and another house in the background. There's five different properties. Five times 1,000 equals how much? How much? Five grand. So the deal is put together, amalgamated. There's 2,037 square metres. Write that down. 2,037 square metres. In the market, it was worth about 2.15, 2.2 million, give or take. Am I going to give the seller the market or above the market? Oh. Clearly above the market, right? So write this down. The strike price, or the option, was written at $2,630,000. $2,630,000. Have we got a happy seller, yes or no? Yes. Stoked. 430000 bucks over the market, I'm in. Not an issue. Sign off the option. And let me tell you a bit about the credentials of this site. Across the street, on the left-hand side of that laundromat, over this side over here in the laundromat, there is a brand spanking new convention centre. Who's thinking that might be a good deal? Raise your hand, right? Yeah. You tell me what the highest and best use is. Convention centre, right across the street. I'm talking chuck a rock at it, okay? It's two blocks away from the mall of this regional city. Two blocks. Is it a good start? Yes. People typically go to the centre of the city for work. What kind of space do they now find themselves in? What sort of space? What sort of space? Professional. Professional office space, right? And strangely enough, as you might know, it's in the heart of some major industry. What do you think's the highest and best use? Come on, come on. It's a crossroad from convention centre. What will be the highest and best? Commercial. Commercial. Excellent. Maybe some parking. Very good. What else? Hotel. What about a hotel? Yeah. Will that work, yes or no? Yes. You guys are too good. This is what we put in the council. Have a look at it. You and I are in a convention centre today. Look what's across the street. Short-term accommodation. Had a 12-storey height limit. We put in a hotel. We've got development approval for 166 hotel rooms. Good start? Yes. Three levels of office space, right, underneath that. And on the ground floor, as you might imagine, someone said earlier, commercial space for restaurants, cafes to service the convention centre as well as the hotel, right? Mm -hmm. Restaurants, ANZ, Nando's, people like that want to go in there. Yeah. All making sense so far? Yeah. Now, have we actually added enormous value, folks? Yes. yes. Bloody oath we have, haven't we? <laughs> right? The option was for how much? It was for five grand, and the option amount was how much? 2.63 million. Is that correct? Yes or no? 2,630,000. Now, folks, when I put this up, this next slide, do you think that valuers are a little bit conservative or a lot? What do you reckon? A little bit or a lot conservative? A lot. Valuers are a lot conservative, aren't they? This is what a valuer said 58 weeks later when the DA was issued. The DA came out of council, stamped and approved. Council loved the idea, and this is what a valuer said it was worth. See the green box? Did you get that? Did you get that? You can't read it. It says $6.9 million. Is that pretty good money, yes or no? That's a healthy profit. What was on the line here? How much? 
that's what was on the line, five grand. Now, if you're curious, the development approval costs there were about 300 grand to get that through council. Does that make sense? But you told me you understood the other, the other what was it called? The other, what? OPM was what? <laughs> this was a graduate's deal. The graduate bought it to us. I paid the $300,000 worth of development approval costs, and that was the profit that was left to share between myself and the graduate. Is that a pretty good start in your business, yes or no? Yes. Now, what you're about to witness is the most incredible business opportunity that you've been offered in 2009, let me tell you. Because I'm actually going to show you a way where you can use my skill, the system, the intellectual property we've created over the last nine years, my dough, my cash, and your property, provided that you're a graduate, of course. I extend that to graduates only. And you and I can divvy up profits like that. Is that a good start, folks, yes or no? Yes. Now, I have a question for you. What's your risk in that? What's your risk as an individual? What's your risk? The option. No risk at all. That's my option. That's my cost. The development approval costs, the option fees, that's my cost, not yours. So what's your risk now? No. Maybe some time. Your risk of not doing it. I agree. That's where we're playing right now. You with me? There's no excuses. When you've got a good track record, you know how to do this sort of stuff, do you think banks want to keep lending you more and more money to do it, yes or no? Yes. So issue, money is not an issue for us, right? The capital is easy to access. That's pretty basic, actually. The, the IP, the processes behind it, is what we're good at. And we're now looking for more arms and legs on the ground to make this even bigger. Do you follow me so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's where you and I fit into a joint venture model. All with me so far? Yes. Awesome. So how do you get that started? Good question. This is what you're going to learn. You'll learn masterful negotiation. You will learn how to focus on the needs of who first. Think carefully. The needs of who first? The seller. The seller. If you want to make a lot of money, folks, in business, don't focus on your needs. Turn the spotlight to someone else. Focus on their needs before yours. Does that make sense? That's what I call masterful negotiation. You'll negotiate like Trump does. Focus on them and their needs before your own. That's how you make some profit. Forget about what you'll make in the deal. Focus on them. Next, well... You might even learn some, some ideas around documentation. But my question to you would be, think about this carefully, folks. If you and I just put together a development approval for a high-rise, a hotel, three levels of office, and one level of commercial, and we have the best part of about $4 million profit. Was that right? Yes or no? Yes. 2.6 million to 6.9 is 4.27 in between and about $300,000 with the DA costs. Is it okay we say 4 million? Is that right? Yes. Come on, folks, it's 21C. Notch it up. Yes. yes? We've got 4 million. My question to you would be would you take that in cash or would you now keep some of those commercial assets? What would make more sense? Keep. Write this down. Your wealth is measured by your holdings. Let's forget the bank. Let's circumvent 25, 30 years together here, people. If we've got 4 million bucks, we've got 180,000 bucks as profit. Let's keep one of the shops, for goodness sakes. That's what I teach. That's what makes you money. That's what gets you retired long term. Are you with me? Wealth is measured by your holdings. But let's forget the 25 years. Let's forget the bank. Let's go use some of these ones. Let's use a system. Let's use someone that's got runs on the board. Let's now keep some assets. And that's what staggered options are all about, my friends. People, no one else is teaching this in Australia. No one even knows what the hell this is. And yet you've just seen it before your own eyes. That's how I've kept a lot of stuff over the years. I'll do a deal, I'll keep a portion. I'll do an industrial estate, I'll keep a, a chunk of industrial land. Does it go up in value or down? Particularly when you've got no debt, is that pretty cool? Yes or no? Yes. Who cares? The bank looks and goes, unencumbered, are you serious? You don't know anything on that? No. Not a single dollar. Are you for real? Yep, I'm for real. See if you can find a mortgage anywhere. Oh, wow, that's unusual. That's unique. You with me? That's how I approach real estate. Completely different. Real estate is good. You must have that. 86% of the world's millionaires do. So there's a clue for you, right? Straight up. But let's now get it through skill rather than debt and risk. Is there a big difference? Yes or no? Awesome. Staggered options is now the art of keeping stuff. Next, you will also, moving forward, this is what now will be the effect. This is effect 
in effect, sorry, 12 months as a commitment from your part and from ours. That means that you can contact us via email, you can contact us via telephone, you can ask us questions. Because you know what? My real money is not made here. My real coin is made doing deals with you. Does that make sense? Why would I actually be here then? To do business, to get more deals, greater and greater profits you and I can split together. You follow me? That's what this is really about. So you can access us via email, online, or phone. Take your pick. All your contact details are in the back of your manuals. Now, there's your coaching support. Yolanda, as well as Nathan. They'll be answering your questions and fielding any queries you might have. First steps first, write this down. Research your own neighbourhood and town plan. Get that down. This is what's going to happen inside the next week. I'm going to do some research on my own town plan. Get a feeling for my backyard. What's going on? Where do I find it? Would you like to be a high achiever? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, let's try that again. Who's here are high achievers? Yes or no? Yes. This is the first step for the next week. You're going to choose one of them sectors. Remember those five ones? Those five bits of real estate? You're going to choose one, whether it's residential, aged care, industrial, retail, commercial, or what was the last one? Professional. Professional. Very good. You're going to choose one of them five and then start on the town plan. That's where we go for two from here. Interpret one sector and then find all the credentials on town plan. Understand what's going on there. How can I maximise this? I see what's going on now. That's where it's zoned and it's actually just bushland or it's an old house right now. And I can stick, I can stick, stick six shops on there. I can squeeze eight shops on there, whatever it might be. Do you follow me so far? That's the first step for this week. That's your homework now. Next, confirm your attendance. You do want to make that happen. Why? Our events have very limited numbers. I'll be frank with you, I don't want to appeal to the masses. I'm looking for a very small band of people that want to make some money without needing the, the, the lumps of cash or huge deposits, things like that. I'm not looking for hundreds and hundreds of people. I'm looking for a select few that want to make some coin as the way that Trump and Kiyosaki do. Is that fair enough? Yep. That's it. Quality rather than quantity. Next, we dispatch the home study kit to you. That means that you're starting to work now immediately, i.e. you'll receive that in the next five working days. They are broken up into three separate chunks. The first manual is all about cash flow. I just did an interview on Saturday at the Marriott Hotel for a fellow that literally did our program about eight weeks ago. This guy just banked 30,000 cash. Is that a good start? Yes. 30,000 cash. He optioned 10 blocks of land. He flicked them onto a builder for $3,000 per block more. He picked up 30 grand in that time frame. And the guy beforehand.